Hi, everybody. I'm PJ Kwong for SGS Live. And in today's session, we're going to take a look back at the path that brought us to this point and the development of the Mobile Sample Preparation Unit, or MSPU. I think we can all agree that the last two years have been very complicated and very challenging, never more so than in the mining industry. And with this in mind, SGS's innovative MSPUs allow for exploration for mining projects regardless of climate or remoteness of geographic location. Not only that, this can help reduce the results, getting the results to the clients um, uh, the t lead time because of the lead time that is not required for the SGS laboratories. Now, the other thing that it can do is allow for effective management of mining projects and exploration. There is a lot to uncover here. And we are, by the way, live at the PDAC convention in downtown Toronto. You got to come and visit us at Booth 102. We're going to be here for the rest of the convention. Super, super fascinating stuff. I am joined today by a very special guest, and that is Cindy Collins, who is the SGS uh, Director of Sales and Business Development for Natural Resources Geochemistry. Oh my goodness, Cindy, I always stumble on that. It's so good to see you. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me, PJ. Well done. Thank you very much. I've been practicing. So for people who don't know, what exactly do you do? Well, as Director of Sales and Business Development Geochemistry in North America, um, I work with a team of geoscientists and chemists together to assist our clients with their geochemical requirements. Uh, internally in SGS, in the natural resources, mineral exploration and mining side, we are combined to reflect our client's business. So we are together geochemistry, metallurgy, mineralogy, environmental, uh, let's see, geological services, the full packet. So basically not busy at all. That's probably the short answer, right? So when we were um, talking, you know, about the business off the top and the fact that there has been huge amounts of exploration in North America, I want to know if this rapid growth has caused any kind of challenges. Yes, PJ, especially for our clients. So, you know, the big challenge here is the explosion of activity um, operating on limited resources. And that could be people capital or supply. Uh, it's a competitive climate right now because everybody's competing for financing. You know, our clients require their analytical results in short order. So really they're having to do this while they have a driller and sometimes paying by the hour for drilling. So, you know, it, it's it's all done during a season as well where they may have been able to the time to review data and go back to the field later. Uh, so it's full on right now, all year round. So, you know, it's quite, quite a challenge. I would guess so. And one of the other challenges that people like to talk about, of course, is sustainability. So I know that 21 of the top 30 largest metals and mining companies by uh, market capitalization have set some level of net zero greenhouse gas emissions target or are already claiming carbon neutrality. Tell me why this is important. Well, carbon neutrality is important. Well, this is important since most of these targets are set for direct and indirect emissions for 2050. There are things that we could do right now. So, um, you know, the, this carbon neutrality comes at a cost. Um, investors are demanding it. Our clients are pulled from all sides. You know, suppliers need to do what they can to help respond. So providing innovative services to reduce those emissions, but also to reduce the timelines and, and costs associated as well. So, you know, I guess the point is it just it goes beyond carbon reduction. You know, it's interesting. We're talking about clients, obviously, and and helping them. And I know that projects are becoming more difficult to explore. Um, and on the flip side, those companies are looking for uh, faster access to data and to results in order to be able to make informed strategic decisions. So how do you balance those priorities? Uh, well, um, I guess all these problems, PJ, present some opportunity. I 
just need to kind of identify and expose. We offer uh, fast uh, field and the local services and testing. So that could be on site at the MSPU or in the laboratory network. So really for our clients, what does fast service mean? It's really, um, this is technology that provide both field screening and advanced data and qualitative analysis. So it's really for characterization of their samples. So rock or uh, drill or uh, soils, pardon me. And it all has to be done in a reasonable timeline and cost. So it depends on how fast you want to make your decisions. So. so that's the cool thing is that you're helping clients figure out what it is they need. Now, speaking of clients and potential clients, we are here at the PDAC convention in downtown Toronto. We are at booth 102. If you want to come by and see us, Sydney's going to be here all afternoon. So for our audience, as always, we have a fantastic audience joining us from everywhere. And if we check out uh, the comments, we can see uh, we have people from Brazil, from Morocco, Algeria, Netherlands, basically the world over. And I want to say a welcome one and all and also to everybody here at the PDAC convention. We are going to have a Q&A at the end of this interview session. If you want more information, make sure you check out the QR code on our screen. That'll take you to a page that will give you more information. And I'm here with my guest, Cindy Collins, who is the Director of Sales and Business Development for Natural Resources and Geochemistry. Okay, let's get back to our questions. In my intro, I mentioned the Mobile Sample Preparation Unit, or MSPU. I really need to know, what exactly am I talking about? Well, uh, clients will ask us, okay, so if you have lab services in the field, how do you ensure quality? I guess that's the biggest question about around the mobile sample prep unit or MSP. So MSPUs really, they reduce the shipping cost, um, related carbon footprint, uh, improve lead time on results, I guess. Um, it's basically expedited commercial assays, right? So SGS installs all the standardized equipment, um, containerized, uh, portable, say like a, a scan. Um, and depending on what's in, in Involved, whether it's crushing, uh, pulverization, sample volumes, etc., it could be a 20 or 40 foot container, and it can be trailer mounted, so for easy uh, shipping, removal, change of locations, and it operates in basically all climate conditions. So. You know, great detail. I love the fact that you covered off on all the basics, but I have a question: How long can the MSPU be uh, deployed at a site, for example? Well, it depends on the client. So it can be for mineral exploration clients, maybe it'll be three to six months. Uh, maybe for development and mining, it'll be sort of ongoing multi-year programs. It just really depends. So we just got to kind of go through the process and figure out all the information. So speaking of process, I would like to speak about Newfoundland and what's going on with the MSPU there. Can you give me a bit of a, a bit of a story? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, with this, this past year, we've had an Australian client, Matador Mining, who has quite an aggressive uh, campaign this past year of exploration in the region and ongoing this year as well. Uh, so we provided their sample preparation and even through the difficult times this past year, we've managed to cut down their turnaround times. So sort of unprecedented turnaround times for this past year, for sure. So it's um, all about speed. What's that? It's all about the speed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, sure. And quality. <laughs> yeah, of oh, course. Of course. Right. So we've been lucky with Newfoundland because it has a skilled and ready workforce. So um, we've been able to set up in a relatively short period of time um, and to find talented people to do technical and physical labor. And so we're, we're pretty happy. So we're preparing rock, uh, drill core, uh, soils. We have a field portable XRF off the back of that to um, test all of the prepared samples. So all this, it's not exactly convenience store pricing. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's similar to the pricing in our brick and mortar labs. 
and this unit is shared amongst um, multiple customers. And really this involves maybe, I guess, it, the, res, the result is two to four week turnaround time. So that's where we want to sit. That is amazing. So I guess one of the other things that people are talking a lot about is ESG. So how does using the MSPU help our clients with their ES, uh, ESG considerations? Sure. I guess, let's start with what is ESG. So, Fair enough. Um, I guess it's centered around sustainability. And really, for mineral extraction and mining companies, you know, you have to be energy efficient. You have to operate in a socially responsible manner. So, the MSPU business model as um, applies to this, such that you know we can reduce the shipping, so the out and back of samples. So, you know, we're we're taking these, you know, <laughs> say uh, big, uh, you know, pallets of raw materials and moving them across continents, between continents, between regions, um, to you know, brick and mortar labs, you know, and we're able to, through the MFU, reduce that to, you know, an 80 kilogram sample, for example, to the size of a large latte or smaller. So, you know, it, it really, um, when you put it in that context, it, it really is impactful. So when we put it into context, when we're thinking eight kilograms, that's like eight cantaloupe melons versus a latte in a cup. So that's uh, about how many grams is that latte? Oh, about 250 to 500, depending on the method. Wow, that is extraordinary. If you're just joining us and you hear a bit of a buzz in the background, that's because we are live at the PDAC convention in downtown Toronto, and we are talking Mobile Sample Preparation Unit, or MSPU, with my expert, Cindy Collins, Director of Sales and Business Development, SGS uh, Natural Resources, Geochemistry. Um, if we would like to find out more information, there is a QR code on your screen. Just scan that QR code and it will take you to a page to get some more information. We're also going to have a bit of a Q&A session after this interview. But for right now, we're going to get back on to this topic. So, Cindy, you mentioned sort of sample size. Can you sort of repeat for me or can you go over for me how samples and the transportation of samples, how that can influence the CO2 emissions? Sure, for PJ. So this can be achieved just basically by reducing tonnage. So that's what we're doing. Um, it's sample reduction, sample preparation in the mobile sample prep unit, MSPU. So, you know, um, this is a benefit for the clients, not only in the cost and the time involved in moving large amounts of samples, but um, it also is a benefit to us as well because, you know, you have market cycles, you have regions vary um, in activity, and you're actually able to be a little more agile in your business and mitigate a bit of business risk as well so that you can, you know, you're operating where the service is needed all the time. So, you know, it has a lot of benefits. You're not leaving, you know, you're not putting a brick and mortar lab and, and leaving a footprint. And, you know, you're, you're hiring and training local and then you're moving the uh, MSPU. You can take the people with you, you can move the people in and out, you know, all kinds of things. Uh, we can do lots of jobs at STS. So. That is great. So I guess I want to know, though, from the client side or from the stakeholder side, is there pressure on them to maintain these environmental standards? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, miners, uh, mineral exploration uh, companies, they've just had to in the past be competent operators, really. So, you know, now there's expectations around community, environment, license to operate, you know, increasing pressures to maintain environmental standards and so forth and to attract investment to be operating in a particular way. So yeah, it's, it's important. You mentioned uh, uh, just a little while ago, sample size and the eight cantaloupes, or did I say eight cantaloupes versus the medium latte? I respond to food. Um, so I guess let's talk a little bit more about where we were with sample sizes and where we are now. Well, PJ, for a decade, you know, we're shipping tons of samples across continents. You know, I mentioned before, by road, sea, air, you know, um, it's just not necessary anymore. In some cases, it's, it's actually not even possible. You know, we know what's been happening 
you know, shipping things by sea. So a lot of delays and uncertainties around that. So, you know, imagine a client taking all their samples, the whole litter of samples, putting it in uh, an ocean shipping container and shipping it to be sampled and losing that. Or, you know, that, you know, your whole program's gone. And, you know, so if you do this locally, the sample reduction, you still have those samples locally. And you can also interact with the SGS staff site. It's very interesting. You and I both know that SGS places a priority on training and sort of upgrading of skills. So how does this factor into the use of the MSPU? Well, we talked about hiring and training locally. So obviously we've we've got standard operating procedures. We have very formal ways of of performing our accredited services um, across our operations, whether in field or, you know, in uh, brick and mortar, you know, in our current network. Um, well, I guess, you know, we spoke about community, environment, uh, localized sample prep, all these opportunities, you know, we, we often find ourselves in a situation where we can acquire really great people locally and train them. So, it's, you know, we're looking at um, you know, entry level labor work, um, some managerial positions, you know, so We have a really great training program and a globally accessible group of people who come in and and provide that expertise and pass it on. So, you know, this, you know, training is something that directly affects quality. So it's taken pretty seriously. Yeah. You know, it's great to know that the training is taken seriously because I know you and I've talked about the fact that good training means that people can have uh, they can rely on the results because it means that people were properly trained, don't you think? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, that whole idea of just making sure people have skills, you know, I think that it's, it's again, really important. We're going to have one more question before we get to our Q&A. And if you're just joining us and you hear a buzz in the background, that's because we are live at the PDAC convention in downtown Toronto. And I am joined here. We are at booth 102, by the way. If you want to come visit, come say hello. We've got some people who are watching already. Um, but if you want to have a word with our expert, she is Cindy Collins, director of sales and business development for uh, natural resources geochemistry and we are talking about the mobile sample preparation unit or MSPU also if you want more information just scan that QR code on your screen and if you want to get into the Q&A just um, leave our leave a question for us in the chat okay you ready hi <laughs> great clearly the MSPU is a game changer But I'm kind of curious, how many SPUs are out there and are they truly mobile? Yep, they sure are. So we've three in Canada and more globally. So uh, I don't know, by my projections later this year, we should have a a few more. Next year, definitely quite a few more. So for context, since 2004, we've had 35 mobile sample prep units in places like PNG, Peru, Congo, West Africa, Mexico, Kazakhstan. You know, and you forgot my favorite, Papua New Guinea. Oh, and Papua New Guinea. It's nice there. Yeah. So since 2011, there are about 20 units still currently active across the globe. So it's, it's, for me, it's, it's exciting to be part of the way we innovate and operate. And I really think this is a good answer to the, the current problems we're having the industry with um, volume. Yeah. So tell me a little bit though about the mobility. Like are they really mobile and how does that work? Yeah, they sure are. So um, you know, we can move these uh, shipping containers, 20 or 40 foot shipping containers by truck um, and or ocean. But yeah, so we do need have a bit of lead time uh, where they're not already created and available for deployment and uh, can be a couple of months or so. Um, but really, you know, you just need to contact us as, you know, quite a bit in advance, I guess, um, if you can. And we'll see what we've got available and what we can deploy for you and help you. And and we've got some interesting uh, busy areas where we're um, sort of finding clients that want to work with other companies to have this type of service. So, you know, you want to just let us know and we can count you in. 
So basically what you're telling me, it's about the listening. You know, you're trying to find out what uh, what clients are all about and what they need. And that brings me to my first question in our Q&A. And I know you're ready for a couple of extra questions. Sure. Uh, what is the process for a customer who is interested in exploring the possibility of using an MSPU? Okay, well, we just need to know what you want. <laughs> so the best thing to do is contact our geochemistry sales team. So regardless of the quantity of samples, the when you're going to do it, um, you need some help, give us a shout. Uh, we'll see if there's something in the area. We're going to put something in. Um, you know, MSPUs are strategically based on demand, right? So clients are in some cases providing referrals, as I said before, to build sufficient capacity. That could be between 30,000 to 100,000 samples or more, which is equates to 100 to 350 a day. So. Wow. I guess the key thing is not to be left out. Um, we hope to catch you this year. If not this year, it'll be next year. But yeah. So it's about starting on that path. So my next question has to do with um, who is your ideal customer? Like what kind of questions can you answer? What kind of solutions can you provide? Um, and, and if they're you know looking at using that MSPU, who is that person or company? Yeah, well, you know, we want to ensure we provide great turnaround, okay? And so who are our customers? Well, they are in need of faster turnaround. Um, they're in uh, either greenfield or, or developed projects. They're, develop they're in development phase. They're uh, miners who are expanding and or need more laboratory services, you know. So it's a, quite a wide range of possibilities. Uh, the special situations tend to be logistically motivated. Um, and if there's a current uh, backlog in uh, local uh, services or their current service providers, you know, it, it's for us, we find it essential that clients will want to communicate. So we need communicative clients. Um, so what we have is our uh, client services group so that group will be available for bridging the gap between operations and the client to communicate you know quality um, sample volume variations any kind of logistical challenge for the client um, we try and help with that too uh, analytical variation um, through the program so especially in greenfield that can change um, yeah so you know just get on board. Don't be left out. <laughs> Happy to help you out. Even just call and inquire. Do you know what? That's the kind of cool thing is it's about building that relationship. And, you know, as a wrap up, I guess I want to think about the SGS services in a more broad way. You know, that you and your team, the client services people, um, what can a client expect? I mean, from that first phone call sort of on the way through, what does that process look like? Well, we, it's, you know, you contact us. We want to know where you are, what you're doing, what you need, when you need it, how you want to go about it. Um, we work with you in that way um, to unfold the, the, the SGS service um, and with the mobile sample preparation and in conjunction with the laboratories in our network. So, you know, for a customer who starts with us, we have onboarding meetings with customer service. So you understand what's going to happen and how it unfolds and you feed back to us what's possible on, on customer end. You know, um, I guess, you know, we're looking at what are the incoming volumes and variations around that, what they might look like. And we kind of address that in our meetings on a weekly, bi-weekly basis. Depends on what the client is comfortable with. Um, yeah. So the next steps, basically, People need to come to booth 102 here at the PDAC convention where they can speak to my expert. And thank you so much for joining me. Cindy Collins, Director of Sales and Business Development, Natural Resources Geochemistry. Last time today. Well done. <laughs> Thanks for having me. This has been wonderful. Again, if you're here in downtown Toronto at the PDAC convention, please make sure you come and say hello to us. And if you're looking for more information, scan that QR code on the left-hand side of your screen, and that will take you to a page that can get you in touch with our team. You can also visit our website at sgs.com. I want to thank you for watching today. I'm PJ Kwong for SGS Live. Bye for now.
Ya me está. <risa> 